in the morning session. Lakini leo katika awamu ya asubuhi. Then Joma disappeared. That you've continued healing people here. And you are ministering to your church. You love Jesus so much. But now you are correcting the church. You are reminding the church. Of the true identity she beholds. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, we can be seated right away. It's raining. Those who are outside in the rain, I bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you indeed. Asante, asante kweli kweli. You have become the hallmark of this revival. Umepanyika alama ya ubuvio huu. The true signature of this revival. Sahiri ya kweli ya ubuvio huu. And you are teaching the nation the lesson of Jesus. Na munafundisha mataipa somo la Yesu. Thank you. Asante nino. When we saw in the first part of this meeting. Wakati tuliona katika semi ya kwanza ya mkutano huu. That the Lord has come to the church. Ya kwa babwana hamekuja kwa kanisa. To do certain restorative work. Kufanya kazi plani ya urejesho. To work to restore. Kufanya kazi kurejesha. If you want, it's called revival. Ikiwa unataka inaitua uvu vio. To revive the church. Kulibu via kanisa. That the church may move to the place she ought to be. Kwamba kanisa likasonge mahali, lika paso wa kuwepo. There is the place the church is and the place she ought to be. And now, in this other part, before I come here, we have seen very clearly the ministration of the Lord to the clergy, to the pulpit. And the Lord is saying that enough is enough. That there has been a lot of negotiations in the house. Between several gods. If you don't touch me, I don't touch you. Let us respect you. You respect me, I respect you. But the Lord is now saying that no two gods can stand up together and be worshipped. But if Jehovah be God, then let us just worship Jehovah. Because wavering between two positions 
vision. It's scientific called oscillating between two positions. He said you have to make up your mind now. If the church was created for heaven, that she has to now enter the highway of holiness that heads to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now I want to advance this conversation because of time and I have so much and time is limited. Listen to this now. I already told you that when the glory came down on that November 1, 3 a.m. in the morning, then the opening of heaven and the glory comes down. I did not hear the Lord telling me, man of God, just hold on a second. Let me go up there and find out what does this darkness want. And negotiate and see how we can agree. Then I'll come back and report to you. I did not hear that. And I said, all I saw was a kundipa an overthrow the overruling of darkness. The dismissing of darkness. The cancellation of darkness. And I say that when the Lord Jesus came to the church, He came as the light of God to the world. And if we are the beholders of that light, then there is no way we can have Jesus and then continue to engage in great areas between light and darkness. And I say it. I have gone through the Bible. I have never found a place where he says that the Lord Jesus he brought the church and he put the church just in the middle ground between light and darkness because he didn't have enough strength. I have searched and searched and searched and searched and searched again. Instead what I found is that the Lamb of God had sufficient power to remove you from darkness and cross over the gray area into the light. Amen. Remove you from death and bring you into not only life but eternal life. Remove you from the world straight into heaven. He did not say and he put you in the midway between heaven and here. And then I said, then what is the church doing in the middle ground? Because you find that now light and darkness are mixed in the house. And the Lord is saying, Enough is enough. Let us now decide. If Jehovah is our God and He is holy, then let us worship in holiness. Then He will help us. Now, 
Sasa in that tremendous vision of November 1. Katika hayo maono ya ajabu ya November tarehe 1. When there was the unveiling of the glorious golden wedding rings in the sky. Wakati ambapo kulikuwa na kufunuliwa zapete za zapete za dhahabu za harusi katika anga. Then you see that the Lord was essentially announcing. Alafu unaona kimsingi Bwana alikuwa akitangaza. In other words, kwa maneno mengine the cloud of God wingo la Mungu has come to announce to the church nimekuja kutangaza kwa kanisa prepare jiandae the Messiah is coming masihi anarudi that's where i want to begin hapo ndipo nitakapokuanzia sasa haleluya haleluya so if he comes to affirm ndipo basi akikuja kudhibitisha If he comes to announce the day of the coming of the Messiah, and he comes as the latter glory, he comes as the latter rain, he comes as the latter anointing. Then that means that essentially when the cloud of God comes he comes to affirm every scripture in Bible about that day. Hallelujah Jonathan. He comes to affirm about that day. In other words, he says, what the Bible says about that day is true. Prepare. Step by step. And if Jesus the Lord and in my Bible such scripture is in red if Jesus the Lord talked about the midnight hour then I want to follow that because he's coming to say that the words of Jesus they stand on that day. Listen, listen pastors. This is now key. Among the narratives that Jesus gave about that day we are preparing for. The midnight hour. The Lord Jesus. He spoke to the church in parable. And he talked about the midnight hour. And in that parable. Listen to this now. He said. That in these days we are in. There is a prophecy that would unveil. That there will be two types of congregations in one church. There will be the foolish church in the wise church. And he says that the wise bride the wise congregation the wise church is the church that will enter the kingdom of God. Now I see all pastors from all over all the nations of the earth yes. including Grenada they are here. And so I want to say this. Then it is important for you as pastors to find out as you minister to your congregation what are the qualities of that wise church that the Lord says enters that I may prepare my own church with those characteristics those features those identities Hallelujah. And I'm, I'm going to move a little faster because I have a target for you. 
If you go to Matthew 20, we're not reading, please just focus on me, we're not reading. We're not reading ahead, much ahead. If you go to Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13, Jesus describes that church that will enter. And in that description, he talks about the foolish virgin and the wise virgin. Then you realize that the key feature that the Lord is exalting about entry is wisdom. And the Bible has well instructed us that behold, it is the fear of God that defines wisdom. Meaning at this time there will be Christians who don't have the fear of God and Christians that will behold the fear of God. And so if you look at some of the events happening in the church today, then you really see that the Lord Jesus was right. Because some of the afflictions that plague the church today. The abortions you see in the house. The loving of money you see in the church. The false apostles, false prophets, all these things. The young men putting on earrings, nose rings, and whatever they do. Sagging trousers. The women tie trousers, ministers, whatever it is you see in the church. The Lord was right because they are actually the consequence of the lack of the fear of God in the church. And so there is a whole description there on what will happen at this time and how old the church to behave. But listen to this now. I get the characteristic of wisdom. And then I go into the Bible now, I want to know. This wise church, this wise virgins. What else is the cloud of God's telling us about them that we may not miss heaven. And so when you go to the book of Mark, don't read it, we're, we're heading somewhere else. When you go to the book of Matthew chapter 7, 24 to 28, you get again the Lord describing that wise church. And he says, that in these days that the, the, the wise church will be like a man this man means man and woman that wise church will be like a man who went and built his house on the foundation of the rock so we will be quick to see what other characteristic the wise church will be meaning she means her life on the rock. Wow. wow. Then that becomes important for you to bring to your congregation. And when you follow very carefully, in that, in that narrative of Matthew 7, 24 to 28, you find him saying, and when the storm came, he does not say if if the storm comes. In other words, the storm always comes. Just walk with me. 
I'm just you passing through this to the message. And it says, and when the storm came, swept the tsunami. The way he describes it, that is a tsunami. He says the, the, the flags, the rain came down. The streams rose. And the tornado wind picked up. And many times when you watch your news and you see that there is a tsunami somewhere, you find that all the some buildings have been brought down. But you may find one building standing. Then they go to the owner and they ask, tell us. You are standing. Others are down. How did you build it? And you hear the owner saying, uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. For me, when I came to this place and wanted to build, I went to the city commission and they gave me the building code for this area. Hey! Hey! The building code is being given here today. And that's why he stood. And then, listen to this now. In other words, the Lord was telling us that there is a day of the storm coming to the church. We need to prepare our salvation and our lives on the foundation of the rock. Because he's saying but this entire earth you can divide the people into two one group that can withstand the storm and the group that will be swept away and so he's saying in passing because I'm heading to a message he's saying the following he's saying that there are two types of storms I want to discuss here Listen, there are storms of this life. Yeah. And there is the day of the storm, the final storm. Will you remain standing on that day? Because when you look at all the buildings in town today, in the city of Elroy, where we are, wow, they all look strong and well built. Until the storm comes, it is the storm that verifies your foundation. If you ask everybody in the church, do you have genuine faith? Oh, yes, we do. Ah, tunayo. Can you adjust for us that thing? Michael, run. You are running, right? Somebody that in controls, can you turn it off? We are live. What have you just touched? I, I need to get. Can I continue as they do that? Bishop, run. Thank you. So he's saying, it's okay now. Don't ever do it again. Please just focus on me because of time. Listen to what he said. He said, What is that now? This, it is this speaker here. Can somebody pull, pluck off the, pluck off his, this whatever? Thank you. Thank you for plucking it off. Pull it out. Disconnect total. Thank you. Asante. Don't use it again. Thank you to me, Michael, can you run there, Michael, and stop looking at people here? Just disconnect the speaker. So I can give the message of the Lord. We are live on TV. Now everybody focus on me now. So you say, 
that I want to discuss two storms this life, the storms in this life, and the storms, the dark major storm, the day of the storm. Somebody don't touch the PA system now, don't touch anything. Dr. Joro, come out of there, let, let everybody sit down with their notebooks. Thank you very much, my sons. We are on live TV, please. Everybody focus on me now. In person. Look at this now. I found out that the storms of this life can actually help you as a Christian to verify what type of foundation you have. And I say that is a self-help, self-help kit. A kit that makes you very fine. For example, you can run into a marriage storm. Does Jesus stop being the Lord because now you are in a marriage storm? You find people that run away from Jesus. So now I don't even want to believe in the Lord. Because my marriage is broken apart. You can right away tell when your foundation is not on the rock. Using just the little storm, maybe they're not little, the storms of this life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How about the storm? Of a rebellious wife, rebellious husband. There are countries we have gone to. I have gone to. Whether you hear that the bishop, the wife did this, so he took a knife and he killed the wife, he's now in court. And so you can easily tell. When the foundation of that man, of that woman, is not on the rock. How about rebellious children smoking, bang, drinking? Do you stop worshiping Jesus because that's happening? How about the death of a loved one? How about if you run into legal problems? Where sometimes your wife is suing you. She, she wants divorce. She has taken you to divorce court or the husband, whichever. And she's beginning to say lies there, lies about you in the court. Does Jesus stop being Lord? I know it's very easy for you to say no. But in the real situation on the ground, those come can be such a formidable force that can shake the salvation of even a bishop in the court. She starts now going to work and when you call her, honey, I have washed the children and it's 8 p.m. we are waiting for you for dinner. Yeah. 
anaingia theatre wakati wa usiku wa manane those storms hayo madoru hizo dhuruma of this life za maisha haya premier cause you to stop preaching the gospel ndio inaweza hata kukusababisha ukombe kumbili chini ya kristo and that's why i say na ndio sababu ninasema as pastors kama wachungaji you can use those storms in this life unaweza kutumia hizo dhuruma katika maisha haya to really know kwa kweli kujua and verify na kudhibitisha whether you are salvation ikiwa wako wako you are alive maisha yako and your ministry na utuma yako is really on the foundation of the rock kwa kweli kama iko kwenye msingi wa mwamba sometimes we get a baby the baby wakati mwingine kupata mtoto i know because i pray for a lot of them na jua kwa sababu nawaombea wengi miongoni mwao you see some of them brought the baby now to the altar yesterday you know sasa wengine jana walileta mtoto kwenye madhabahu where you are there for 16 years is no child mababu mko kwenye ndoa miaka 16 hakuna mtoto I want to move to the next storm. Nataka nisonge kwa dhuruma nyingineyo. The final storm. Ile dhuruma ya mwisho. We are all preparing for that day. Sote tunajiandaa kwa sababu ya hiyo siku. You are all as a pastor. Wewe mchungaji mnako kama mchungaji. To prepare your congregation. Ni kuandaa kusanyiko lako. On that day, ya kwamba katika hiyo siku when the Messiah come, wakati Masiya atakapokuja, the storm come, wakati mawimbi atakuja, you are church then we stand the storm of the day kanisa lako linaweza kustahimili mawimbi ya siku hiyo and enter eternity na kuingia ubilele that is your primary role hilo ndilo jukumu lako la kimsingi Matthew chapter 16 verse 16 to 18 we are not reading Mathayo 16 mstari wa 16 hadi 18 Matthew 16 verse 16 to 18 to 19 Mathayo 16 mstari wa 16 hadi 19 This is what he says about that day Sikiliza kila anachosema kuhusiana na hiyo siku And he says Naye anasema Who do people say I am Watu wanasema mimi ni nani And they said you are prophet of old come back. Alafu 